Good evening, and um, tonight on this book talk, I wanted to talk about a book that I just finished, and it is called The Witch's Daughter by Paula Braxton. This is not a YA novel. Surprise, surprise. I do read things that are not YA every once in a while. Uh, this was a book that I picked up on a whim, which is very not common for me. I usually only read books that I have um, looked at before, have researched, or been recommended. And this book I got um, on a whim when I was on a trip to Barnes & Noble, and I saw it on the table, and I was like, that sounds really interesting. Why not give it a go? So I did. I decided to give it a go, and I was not disappointed. Um, so this book uh, follows our protagonist, Elizabeth Hawksmith. And um, this is set of almost in a diary format. She's writing in her book of shadows. And so every once in a while, you'll see like little blurbs on the top of the page, mid page, whenever when a new, um, new chapter <laughs> starts. And it usually has a date in the cycle of the moon. And that is because that is her writing a new entry. So Elizabeth Hawksmith is 380 some odd years old and she's settling into a village in uh, England, present day England, and she meets a young woman named Tegan. Tegan is, I want to say, in her late teens. So she's still in high school, but to a point where she skips a lot to hang out with Elizabeth and she has an older boyfriend and she puts on airs of someone older than herself so that all indicates maybe someone that's 17 or 18 years old and um, uh, Elizabeth feels automatically a kinship to this young woman and uh, feels at home and at ease with her and feels like she can open up so she decides that she is going to take this young woman under her wing, teach her the ways of the hedge witch, and um, basically start to tell her story a little bit. So this, uh, so a lot of this does not take place in present time. It does go back and forth. There are flashbacks in this book. Uh, three actually in total. So one takes you back to the beginning, to the 1620s, when um, Bess or Elizabeth becomes a witch and it goes into how she met Gideon the warlock that um, turned her into a witch and that whole story the plague the witch trials all of that in the 1620s Bathcombe England the second uh, flashback goes to August to November of 1888 in Whitechapel uh, London which if you are a history nut and know anything about serial killers, you will know that in 1888 from August to November in Whitechapel, London, though that was the time of Jack the Ripper. So that was my favorite flashback, actually, as morbid as it sounds. Um, it was very cool, the story that she twisted into um, Jack the Ripper and how it affected Elizabeth. And then the third flashback is back into 1917 um, war front in France for the First World War. And um, that was the shortest of the three flashbacks, but um, all three flashbacks contain the same thing, Elizabeth, Gideon, and running. <laughs> so basically Elizabeth's life, her entire life, she's been running from this warlock named Gideon and it all comes to a head in the climax of the book. It is very good. It is a very nice and leisurely read. Um, although there are some action-packed parts of the book, most of it is very leisurely. It goes at a very nice pace. This is something I would recommend if you want to um, take a book with you on vacation or if you're looking for something to read at night before you go to bed that you can just read a couple chapters and put it down and pick it up the next night. This is definitely a book for that. Um, this is not a book if you want something to sit down in one sitting and just get engrossed in a book. Because although I did really get into this book at times, um, it was not hard for me to put it down. So, I mean, that's that's what I consider a leisurely read, I guess. Because I guess I'm not normal when I read a book or two books a day. So, but um, it I did read it over a couple of days or a few days actually like three or four days so uh, it was it was a nice read it was a good read um, not very long it's about four hundred pages 
I gave it three stars on Goodreads. Oh, the reason why I picked this book up is said it was a historical romance. No, no, none of that. There's like maybe a little romance, like a couple pages <laughs> here and there, but there's no romance in this book. This book is all about Elizabeth and running from this man, Gideon. So, um, it is very, it is very good. Um, if you are into witchcraft and the occult, I would definitely pick it up. A lot of the aspects of, especially in the beginning in present day, Elizabeth, I do see a lot of, uh, things that I would recognize as Wiccan. I don't really know that much about witchcraft or the occult. It's not something that I um, am very into, but a lot of things I did recognize. She does make a lot of tonics and potions and teas, and she relies on a lot of natural remedies. Um, her mother was a midwife in the 1620s, and so she carries a lot of those natural remedies with her as she goes through life. And uh, she basically just wants to be a healer and use her powers for good. And I do love how it took it into both a good and light place with witchcraft where um, the immortality and all of the uh, power comes from a satanic place where is all the peaceful and um, natural magic comes from a good place. So it does uh, cover both sides of that spectrum. Um, so I definitely would recommend this if you're looking for a nice light read about witches. So there's that. <laughs>